Hey, greetings, Fright Nights. I'm Count Jacula. And I'm the Horror Guru. And we just saw Stranger Things. Oh, man. This is. Stephen King described this on Twitter as his greatest hits in the best way possible. And I got to say, I don't disagree. This is. No, he's 100% right. This is basically like. This, this is. This was obviously the love child of someone who grew up in the 80s reading all the Stephen King books and seeing all the movies based on it on it as well as uh, as well as watching all the Amblin kids films. Yeah. The yeah. stuff like E.T., The Goonies and uh to, to a certain extent things like Gremlins. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and decided to combine all of it, all of that gestalt into one show on Netflix that you could watch right now if you have Netflix. I, I'm pretty sure anywhere. This is not one of those region based. I don't think I don't think it's region based because no, it's I a Netflix it's... show. Yeah. Um, and it it does it so lovingly and so well, and it's set in the 80s, yeah. which makes it even better. Like, yeah, yeah. They're eight one hour episodes each. Um, they're all really good and. Uh, if you're a fan of Stephen King novels, first of all, the logo looks like the classic Needful Things. Yes, yes, 100%. Logo. 100%. And like a Stephen King story, each episode is a chapter yep. with a title. Yep. You know, like chapter, you know, chapter six, the body. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like an actual, like a straight up nod right there to a Stephen King oh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah. So good that way. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the basic setup of this story is that a one boy goes missing and it sets off an investigation into it, it's, the it, strange it, occurrences it, it, it's of the, the town. It's one of the rare things that's kind of less Stephen King. Well, though it's partly Stephen King, but it's the one of the moments that reminded me of something outside of those two creators, Spielberg and King. That part actually reminded me a lot more of uh, Twin Peaks. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, where you have like this one missing person just set off this whole chain of weird events that just takes you deeper and deeper down this crazy hole. Yeah, but the good thing about it is that unlike Twin Peaks, it comes to a conclusion. Yes, it has an actual conclusion and a setup for like future seasons if they want to do it. But a satisfying enough conclusion where if they don't greenlight a second season, you're you're happy with where it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's small little mysteries that are never solved, but the big mysteries are all answered. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and lead to other mysteries, which... Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, but the main story about the kid, what is going on, you know, who is this weird girl who shows up, all that's answered. All that is part of the story. Absolutely. Um, and you're introduced, like, when this kid goes missing to his friends, his, his group of friends. Yeah, who we'll all play D&D &D together. Yes, yes. That's another part. If you're, like, if you grew up in the 80s or 90s and played a lot of D&D, &D, this thing gets you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The D&D &D is a straight-up motif in this yes, show. It keeps absolutely. coming back. Absolutely. And it keeps drawing allusions to things that are happening in the story to a D&D &D campaign. Yeah. Um, because mainly because that's the way the kids see everything is through D and D. So they're yeah. constantly going like, "Oh yeah, that right there, that's the dragon." You know, it's like, yeah, exactly. You no, know, absolutely. Remember that time we, we we tried to fight the Balfour? You don't split up the party. Yes. You know, I, I was really <laughs> glad that line happened. Absolutely. No, you're splitting up the party, man. Can't do that. It's gonna pick us up one by one. You know it. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. Um, and you're also introduced to the sheriff, who's the one looking for the boy. Oh, man, the sheriff is my favorite classic, character. Classic, like, alcoholic, grizzled, like, straight out of a 70s cop movie sheriff. Yeah, or yeah. a Stephen King novel. Yeah, yeah, he feels like a sheriff <laughs> in a Stephen King story. Absolutely. Who who obviously just is kind of tired and sick of the world around him. But the moment, like, the kid goes missing and it seems to be real, he just kicks into gear and it's, like, straight up, like laser focus mode yeah yeah he reminds me a lot of the cop who the the character that was the cop character that's in both the dark half and needful things oh yeah yeah absolutely most definitely the kids kind of remind me like of, of of a cross between the body and like and the kids uh, from it and it yeah. yes <laughs> yes yes and to a certain extent there's a little bit of silver bullet in there you know oh yeah very much so <laughs> most definitely you know man uh it's really hard to talk about this a lot of this show without going into spoilers so i think we should just do that so spoilers okay so 
this all revolves around a research facility that exists in the town. Yeah, absolutely. If if you've seen uh if you've seen uh, Hemlock Grove, kind of like that. Yeah, right? yeah, kind of like that. But that's not a very great comparison because this organization feels a lot creepier. Well, absolutely. It's it's treated like 80s movies used to treat seedy government operations. Yeah. You know, like uh, I think of like like The Dead Zone or I think of like, um, which I was about to say is very Cronenbergian because the main scientist looks like Cronenberg. But now that I think about it, the Cronenberg story it reminded me the most of was a Stephen King story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, but you basically have like the CD government operation that's hidden underneath like this power facility, which is obviously like, like, like the, the distributes power to the whole town, but it's actually like a front for a government operation. Very much like, uh, like how in the mist there's that secret yeah. military base where they think the mist comes from. In this case, this is the secret military base. Yeah. Yeah. They, they straight up like run with that and say, yeah, it, it's a secret military operation that is causing this. Absolutely. Problem. You know, and this problem is that this kid goes missing and they have no idea why, but at the same time, people keep running into this monster. This face faceless, lanky creature that the kids start calling, uh, what do they call it? They call it Demogorgon. Yeah, they, they start calling yeah. it the Demogorgon. Um, yeah, after the D&D &D demon yes. prince. Yeah. Um, which I believe you pointed out is a monster that steals children. Yep. Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how deep into D&D &D <laughs> yeah. this thing goes. Yeah, you know, like, like he knows more about D&D &D than I do. So, like, he was, he was, he was filling me in on all, like, what the things was. Like, he's one of the people that pointed out when they, when they talk about, like, the Veil of Shadows, that in D&D &D it's actually called the Plane yeah, of Shadows. Yeah, the Plane of Shadows. So you're like, uh, uh, uh. uh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Veil of Shadows is a specific valley in the Forgotten Realm. Realms that is in the video games that they made based on the Forgotten Realms, like Icewind Dale, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the place that they're actually talking about is called the Plain of Shadows. He, which, he was also pointing out things like uh, when the kids had this Millennium Falcon and how it's like, up, oh, up, oh, that's the '90s Millennium Falcon. Yeah, that's not the '83 <laughs> Millennium Falcon. I know you can't fool me. I, I, I wouldn't have known either way, like which Millennium Falcon, because I never owned a Millennium Falcon. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as, I, as I said, like I know it's '80, not '80s Millennium Falcon. It's '80s Millennium Falcon. That backside where the fucking like hyper thrusters are yeah, and yeah. shit. That's just a sticker. But on the '90s one, it's actually like a sculpted relief. Nice. I and never had the Millennium Falcon. I had the uh, the, the Boba Fett uh, Slave One. Slave One, yeah. yeah. And I think it was the '90s version of that. I don't know what the original version was like. The, the original one was like a lot more like bright colors and not as much painting on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like the one in the '90s actually kind of looks like a used spaceship. Yeah. The classic toy didn't look that cool. No, nah, it's too you bad. Know, it was not as awesome. I mean, but it did get, awesome shit. But <laughs> to go away from the Star Wars nostalgia, because yeah. like, this thing is so nostalgic, you're gonna find yourself talking with your friends about a whole bunch of things. Oh my child. god, yeah. Not, to, not the least of which is the music. Oh yeah, the music yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, the theme song is very obviously intended to feel like a John Carpenter score. Mm -hmm. um, but the music used within the story, they're all songs from the 80s. And it's not like, and they're not they're not pulling out like shit like everyone knows, like fucking Michael Jackson. No, they're pulling out like Depeche Mode, The Cure, yes. uh, Joy Division, and, and The even, Clash. Yeah, yeah. And even you know, stuff the like Clash The Clash is actually a... a plot point yeah one thing i song. liked about it is that it didn't do it lazily it wasn't oh, no. like oh we're in the 80s so now we're gonna play you know run you yeah. know it's like it, it it was basically like we're gonna pick songs that are thematically relevant to what's happening yeah you know so like they're like there's this point where where uh the clashes uh should i stay or, or should, should i go, go yeah. starts playing and it is a situation where a person's literally tr trying to figure out if they should leave or if they should stay while ghostly shit's happening yeah you know like freaky shit. And there is like straight up supernatural slash science fiction y shit going on. And the movie blurs the line between the two, so it's great. Yeah. Yeah. You get the, the like, oh God, they fucking build that monster up. Oh God. Like you start to really like like someone asked me on Twitter whether or not this how scary this show was. And I'd only gotten three episodes in, so I was like, well, it's about as scary as, like, you know, like an 80s kids movie, like like a Gremlins or a Silver Bullet. But yeah. the show actually gets even scarier. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, on. it gets darker. Like, I kind of felt bad. Like, towards the end, it started giving me shades of aliens. Yeah. Like, well, know. it starts it starts to straight up turn into the mist. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, like, when they actually enter the, the Veil of Shadows, 
like you're you're basically seeing the world that would that would be on the other side of the mist. Yes, yes, it's very much a mixture of the mist and because of what they're wearing when they go in, you're getting like shades of the first Alien movie. Yeah. Um, when they go inside the ship and they got like those spaces. Yeah, not to mention ET. Yes, not to mention ET, and they come across that that they come across the egg in Alien. They come across another egg that indicates that this is probably where the creature hatched from. Yeah. And it's very much a scene reminiscent of Alien, and so I was like, oh man, like I love how they weaved in all this like influence into it without making it feel like it's just a cut and paste job yeah yeah and and the thing the other thing is that man those government operas do not fuck around no 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 it, it is like it's like they were in et yeah. like before they removed the fucking guns and replaced it with walkie talkies and the government meant business yeah <laughs> Yeah, like they just meant business. They like come right in right off the bat. They set you up with a character that you you really grow to like because he's doing like the most human thing possible and yeah. taking care of this little girl he finds. And then they just fly out, kill him. Yeah, just shoot him in the just head. Bam, dead. And you're like, holy shit! I actually, I was convinced this character was gonna last the whole fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, that's how good the show is. Yeah, it convinces you that this guy was gonna be a recurring character, and then they kill him 10 minutes yes. later and, and you 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 feel so bad when he dies yeah because like, you're like he absolutely doesn't deserve it like no one in this show do you feel like holy shit they deserve that except for maybe when some of the bad guys start getting it yeah and, you know yeah but that doesn't happen to like till the end yes yes that's when like the come up it's is happening you know? yeah because because there is a girl in this who's very obviously a combination of firestarter and carrie yes she absolutely she's got firestarter's background but carrie's powers yeah I uh, mixed in with some other like like powers from like insomnia where it's like yeah I yeah yeah that's true and she also has like some of the insomnia powers <laughs> yeah. but like the big thing that's interesting is once they get once you get to the climax where she has to do stuff there's some points where it gets straight up akira like oh absolutely it starts getting really akira and part of her backstory like like harkens back to uh what's it called um uh fucking the isolation tank movie. <laughs> Altered states. Altered states. Yeah, yeah, very much. Like some of the some of the some of the experiments they pull they pull on her are very altered states. Yeah, they they use the same like the the, the same uh, image of the isolation tank, which is not what the isolation tank looks like. It's way cooler. It's way cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one in the movie is way cooler because it looks awesome and intimidating, which is supposed to do. But the thing is, I'm not sure if that version of the isolation tank would work because it requires them to pump air in. Yeah, exactly. No, it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't work as a nice isolation tank no. yeah 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 an actual isolation <laughs> tank is much more like the, the the thing they build at the end for her to use on the fly yeah yeah you know it's much more like that except it has like a, a cover that just takes all the light out yeah most definitely you know but you know that one was actually a lot closer and that was the moment where i was like oh you do okay you absolutely know what an isolation tank yep. is because you understand what the, you understand the saturation level that's needed you understand everything it well, does it's very but you built this just because it would be awesome. It's very you know? clear that like the people who who made this movie did a lot of research yeah. into everything. And, and maybe some of the stuff was just stuff they already knew. Yeah. You know, like obviously anything involving the 80s, they probably already knew because they were... They, yeah, they grew up in the 80s. You know? Yeah. But like stuff like the isolation tank, they probably did a lot of research just to make sure they got all that right. Yeah. You know? But still, like for for the sake of the backstory, they went with a really cool looking one because it's more cinematic. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. Because because regular isolation tank is not very cinematic. It looks like a box with a top. Sl Which is top. another thing I love you know? about this show is that when you watch this show, this is one of the rare television shows, even though it's a Netflix show, so it's technically an internet show. It's one of the few shows you watch where you feel like you're watching a really, really long movie. Yeah, yeah. It feels like an eight-hour movie. You know, it doesn't feel like a show because it is so cinematically done. And it's split up in the chapters, so it feels like a, yeah. less like episodes. It feels more like a movie than the fucking Daredevil does. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Daredevil already was looking pretty cinematic. Yeah. Right? But this, like, tops that. Like, oh, God, yeah. Because this feels like... Like, I now want these two, these two brothers who did this show They're to the adapt... Duffer brothers? Yeah, to adapt everything Stephen King from now on, because... If yeah. they were doing the Stephen yeah. King miniseries, they'd actually be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I keep finding myself, like, I kept finding myself imagining what would happen if they straight up did a television series that was Castle Rock, and they actually did all of the Castle Rock stories interwoven oh, with each awesome. other. So that it actually goes from, like, Cujo 
to Mrs. Carmody to the mist. That'd be great. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just put all those. That'd stories be awesome. Together. You can even put some of the stories that aren't necessarily in Castle Rock, but just put them in the neighboring towns. And, yeah, exactly. You know, you know like um, the uh, yeah, needful things happens at Castle Rock, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Okay. That that is the ultimate culmination. That's of the right. Castle Rock story. That's right. Yeah, that's the one that like literally like references throughout. It's like, oh yeah, there's that old farmhouse with that where that dog attacked. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it straight up references it throughout. Yeah, and there's the, you know, oh, there's that place where I had that weird encounter with that crazy writer. Yeah, you know, exactly. The dark half. Exactly. Like like needful things. It was the culmination of that, and I think after that he kind of toned down the Castle Rock stuff. Well, yeah, because it kind of reaches peak. Yeah. Like you he know. references them a lot in the Dark Tower movies. Um, yeah, but it's references or the, like not, not movies, books. Yeah, but it's references like that place over there. Yeah, kind of thing. Like one of the one of the movie. Well, uh, sorry, short stories uh, that kind of gets left out of the Castle Rock trilogy, but is absolutely directly connected uh, is the Sun Dog. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't think I've read that one. Yeah, the Sun Dog is basically. Uh, the Hound of Tindalos, Ooh. if you're familiar with that. Ooh, okay. You know, the dogs, the spirits that come through angles to kill you. That's they hunt cool. you through the angles of time. Well, this one specifically hunts you through the angles of time through photographs. Oh, okay. So it's it's kind of Slender Man-y, except it's not like, oh, it's creepy. It's like, no, no, no. Every picture you take from a certain angle it is coming to kill you. And the fact that you've taken a picture of it at all means it's already gotten you. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those like, oh, Jesus. Like, is is there any running away? No, there's no running away. That could be a cool movie. Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd watch yeah. it. I'd watch it. But anyway, to get back to the <laughs> Stranger Yeah, get back things. to Stranger Things. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, like we're kind of all over the place here because this is, like, this is an eight-hour this is an eight hour movie essentially with so many great details that all culminate into something. Oh well, yeah. And so many great characters. Like there's not a single character in this that I, I like there are characters I didn't like, but I kind of like to dislike them. Yes. <laughs> you know? well, it's, it, it did. It did the thing that was so amazing. It's like, this is why it nailed Stephen King so well. All yeah. of those characters are very simple, but they're fully realized, fully. which is a fucking hallmark of Stephen King story. And they all have their own little flaws and their, and their, yeah. their benefits, you know, like you have the super neurotic anxiety ridden mom who really does love her kids, but she's so ridden with anxiety. She can't function a lot. Of yeah. Time. Yeah. She can't, she can't function. Uh, you've got like the, the, the older brother of the kid who disappears, who very obviously has been so focused on keeping his mother stable that he himself has had no opportunity to fucking grow as a person. Oh, absolutely. And he's very you much know. an outcast too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And he, and, he, and he loves his brother and his whole thing is he's constantly trying to prove to people that he's actually capable, which he is, but no one lets him be that. Yeah, yeah. N not the least of which is dad. Yeah, not the least of which is dad. You know. Who is a motherfucker. Who is probably the most hateful, the most, the character I hated the most. Oh yeah, well he was just straight up an asshole. You know, like like even the bully kids, like you had the you had the two bully kids that were basically like like the bullies from uh, Carrie. Yeah, you know, and but then you had the one bully kid who kind of comes around and becomes a good guy by the end of it. Yeah, and even the two bully kids that were like the kids from Carrie, I didn't hate nearly as much as that dad. No, that dad was just no, like, no, Jesus but well Christ. because well, because he did they did he feels like a Stephen King character because there are every time right before he does something really awful you find yourself almost identifying with him because he doesn't come off as that bad a guy until the asshole turn happens. Well, yeah, until you realize what his true motivations are. Yeah, yeah, that's when you realize he's You know, he's a complete, a complete user who is just like, he doesn't even care that his kid's gone missing. He just he just wants to get the money from suing the quarry where he might have died. Like, yeah. it's, you know, it's like completely despicable. Completely. Yeah, there is um, the... The older sister of one of the young D and D players, basically the main character. Yeah, basically the main character. Um, she has a very interesting flaw that you don't see that much anymore. Which is what's her flaw? Her flaw is that she's a girl who cares way too much about what people thinks, and so she never tells anybody the truth. Yeah, yeah. It's always a thinly veiled like half yeah, she, truth yeah she only tells half truth she never tells the absolute truth and this causes huge amounts of problems and you can tell she gets it from her mother oh yeah oh yeah because yeah. her mother is one of those really super white suburban like goody two-shoes mothers who's who's always got her prayers in mind for you and yeah it's always all that stuff but it's all hollow yeah you know? yeah well she didn't doesn't even say prayers it's that kind of new agey kind of like if you need to talk I'm here for you. Yeah. But like with that kind of, with that understanding of like, 
th- there's no help you can give. Well, it, no, well you're, she you're says useless. that. You say, she says that, but you look at her, the way she carries herself, the way she talks, there's no way you can actually open up to her. Yeah, exactly. You know? And I, I thought that was really incredible because yeah. I'm like, wow, that actress is doing a great job of playing that a character who offers those really hollow, helpful pieces Absolutely. Of and you can tell that was intentional. Yeah, oh yeah. Because Super towards the end it becomes clear how oblivious that mother really is and kind of like how intentionally dense she is. Yeah. You know, and you can tell that she probably understands that more is going on, but she's just too wrapped up in her own suburban life to, to see the force of the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cops couldn't possibly be wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, a government organization couldn't possibly be out to murder her son. And quite possibly the most eighties character in the entire movie is the main character's dad. Oh yeah. That 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 woman's husband who is the the quintessential 80s dad who's not really there. Yeah. Even when he's there, he's not He's there. not there. He's completely yeah. checked out. Which is such an 80s trope of having just the complete absentee father, which part of really why it's an 80s trope is because of Spielberg movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spielberg really brought that to light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spiel, Spielberg always loved the uh, the, the daddy issue storyline, because probably because he had issues with his father, I yeah. guess, I guess. Um, which probably, to, I actually want to talk a little bit about the, the, the main, main cast. Yeah, sure. Because sure. most of what we've been talking about are a bit like the supporting characters. Yeah, yeah. But the main, main cast is this group of of uh, friends, this group of boys, uh, who play D&D together, and who run into, while they're looking for their friend who has gone missing, run into this girl who's obviously escaped like a medical facility. Yeah, yeah. You know, who is the the fire starter Carrie psychic girl. Mm -hmm. And their whole tale, everything they do relates to Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy stories. Like, they refer to that area of the town as Mirkwood. Yeah, yeah, straight up from The Hobbit. Yeah. The kid who's gone missing has a little, like, castle fort in the middle of the forest, you know? And Radagast is the password. Radagast is the password, yeah. yeah. Um, you start to realize that each of these boys is made with... A character class in mind. Yep. Like, the kid with no teeth is, like, the paladin slash cleric. Yeah, because he's always giving them food for nourishment, and he's always trying to make sure that it, make sure everyone's spirits are up. Yeah, so. make sure that they essentially follow the bro code. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's like, hey, man, I understand that you were mad at him, and he was way out of line, but you pushed him first. That means you've got to offer the apology. Yeah, yeah. I'm not offering no apology. This ain't up for discussion. You're doing it. Like, and I, God, I love that moment. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, fucking fatty's going to lay down the fucking law. And well, the funny thing is, is that he felt like the fat kid, but he wasn't actually fat. No, no. But he, he felt no. like that kid. But yeah, yeah. But that's the archetype <laughs> yeah. that he's kind of tapping yeah. into. You know, kind of uh, out, out of shape, a little chubbier. Yeah. Not, you know. But all... they do play on it because, like, he races one of the kids at the beginning and kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of craps out. because like, uh, uh, Yeah. Uh. But his main, but his main, like defining, like 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 trait outside of that is his lisp. You know? Yeah, yeah, because his front teeth are missing because he's like ten. Yeah, you know, um, his te- he has the like, condition where his teeth are growing in late. So. Yeah, there's uh, the black friend because eighties movie you gotta have the black friend. It didn't have the Asian friend though. It that, didn't. It didn't. You know, which would, which would have been very Spielberg to to have the short round. Well, yeah, the <laughs> the yeah, it would have. Ha- the only place you could have had it is it prob- would have had to have been the girl. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been the way you'd have to do it, because there's really no room for another character. Yeah, exactly. And but the 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 black friend, as you go on, you're like, oh, he's he's the ranger. Yes, yeah. You know, he's got the ranged weapon, he's the one who goes out into the forest by himself. And, and also to, to make an eighties reference, he's Michael he's 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 uh Raphael. Yes. You know, yeah. of of the of, of the, the Ninja four. Turtles. Yeah. yeah. You know, he of the four one, he's the one that's constantly rebelling with the leader. Like it's like, Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah, the leader's obviously like, you know, like paladin slash fighter. Yeah, and their friend that disappears was the wizard of their group. And when they introduce to the little to the girl with the power, she becomes the yeah, wizard. Yeah, she becomes the wizard. And I'm watching this and I'm like, oh my god, they're perfectly doing that kind yeah. of we were in the middle of an adventure and then one of the players left and now we need a replacement. Yeah. So you're the wizard now because he was playing the wizard, we need a wizard. Yep. You know? Yep. <laughs> yep. Because it's always a spellcaster that goes. It's always fucking spellcasters that crap out in the middle of the adventure. I don't know why. Well, it seems like they got that detail. Really they well. did. They got it real you know, well. And the main character is basically the fighter, you know? It's, yeah. You know. Yeah, fighter, maybe bard, you know, good maybe. basic class. He doesn't really 
He doesn't really bard, though. No, It's not really no. about music. No, he doesn't fight as much either, but it's the only thing you can really do besides just calling him leader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, he does get in a fight, but it, it, it ends before he actually throws a punch. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, um, man. The... And you have the classic 80s bullies. Yes. You know, you have like the, the the little kids are bullied by these two mean kids and then you have like these two these two uh teenagers that are bullying the uh Yeah. uh the the teenage brother of the kid who goes missing, who is the one we're talking about who's who's uh got the neurotic mother. Um and is very much like 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 the grungy punk rock kid. Yeah, yeah. Well it's the eighties, so it'd be punk rock. Yeah, yeah. Punk yeah, he's rock. listening to like Joy Division class. Absolutely. He know? just dressed a little grungy. He did, he did. You know. <laughs> you know? Well, well like back 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 in those days a small town, like if you're into punk rock, you were, would be visually because identical to a metalhead. Because know? there'd be no way to get most of the stuff. Like, exactly. You'd have to like yeah. make it yourself. And it's obvious that this guy spent most of his time working to try to take care of his mom. Yeah, yeah. He's brother. working to try to take care of the family. You know. You know. Um, but like like uh there's there's the there's the two bullies that bully him. And then there's uh, the boyfriend of the sister, yeah, who is complete yuppie jackass, yeah, just full on eighties yuppie jackass. You know, the, the the show tried to treat him sometimes as charming, mainly because the girl found him charming, but he wasn't that no, charming. No, no, he was he really was douchey. He's a douchebag. You know, it, 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 you know, you get to, well, you get to the whole, the thing I found interesting about the whole sister story is the thing, she has to work with the, uh, the, the punk rock guy to do some shit in the woods. Because one of her friends goes missing and it's presumed that she was taken by one of the monsters, yeah. mainly because she went back to the location where she went missing and saw one of the monsters. Yeah. Which I think there's actually only one monster, but I was kind of confused at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little ambiguous as to how many monsters there are, yeah. but they're for the... I'm assuming if there's, there's a whole realm, if there's a whole realm of creatures, I'm going to assume that there's more than one. Yeah. Even though the move, the show mainly dealt with one monster. Yeah. So... They um they go out into the woods and because like we said this character only speaks in half truths, mm -hmm. um she denies the fact that she's dating this other guy. She denies the fact that she's developing feelings for this older this brother of this missing kid, and just ends up completely insulting him. And he just lays it down. He's like, "All right, so this is what it is. You are." Every little good suburban girl ever who thinks that she's unlike all the other suburban girls, but you're exactly the same. You're going to continue your life. Maybe you'll go to college. Maybe you won't. But you're going to get married to an ex-athlete who doesn't really do very much that you don't really love and end up living at the end of a cul-de-sac like your mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I like the detail. It's like, like, like... E you think you're rebelling, but you're rebelling in the most socially acceptable way for your Yeah. Are, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You're not. Your rebellion not is hollow. Yeah, your rebellion <laughs> is hollow because I'm an outsider for real. Yeah, yeah. And it's know, very I'm an outcast for real. And you can very much see the difference. Oh, yeah, super stark. You know, like her rebellion gets her with the popular kids in school and the yuppies and all that stuff. Yeah. And his rebellion gets him alone. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. He gets nothing. He barely even has the respect of his family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially not his dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like that that shit's rough. Dude, this movie gets crazy. And see that we keep calling it movie because it feels like a movie. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> it really feels like a movie. It really feels like an, a movie broken up into eight one hour parts. Absolutely. Like if you fucking love those eighties stuff, if you like things that harken back to that, like Monster House or Super Eight or Earth to Echo, you gotta see this. Oh no, this one is a must see. Absolutely. This is a must see. If like if any if if, if any Stephen King movie like has a special place in your heart. You gotta watch this. Absolutely. It's amazing. If you think the idea of doing a Stephen King story in the visual style of Steven Spielberg sounds great, you gotta fucking. Watch it makes this. you wish that Spielberg had directed some of those. Like you know, I know those uh, I Stephen know. King stories. Yeah, it does. <laughs> there was one thing I thought was kind of funny is I didn't see an instance of the classic 
Steven Spielberg push into the the facial expression. It probably happened, but the, the thing is, is that Spielberg uses it so well, and this show probably used it so well that we didn't even notice. Yeah, we might not have noticed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we we saw the first three episodes twice, and the rest of them only once. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm watching the first three episodes a second time because basically we watched the first three episodes, and then we we're like, we got to show your wife, your wife. Yeah, you know. So then we watched it all again with her, and this the amount of details we noticed the second time around those oh first my three God. episodes. Yeah, yeah, I'm. We're gonna be we're gonna be watching this again. Yeah, yeah. So this is not just a show you want to watch once. Just keep you want yeah, to come yeah. back to. Yeah, yeah. And and the the, the um, this thing's already getting a huge amount of positive buzz. Oh God! Like 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 Guillermo del Toro was talking about, it, and he's also talking about he he knew the uh, filmmakers, and and they told him that there's also nods to him in it, and you can kind of see it. Yeah, you, you can kind of see it when you yeah. look at the monster. The monster, in some ways, is kind of reminiscent of the uh, yeah Hans yeah of the, the the hand fairy and Samael from and, Hellboy. And the 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 veil of shadows, uh, is like a somewhat kind of like fairyland. Yeah, yeah. God, I really. I really hope they get a second season. Because, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, though, now here's the thing. When they were like, are you getting a second season? They're like, well, it's been ordered, but we haven't made it yet. And by the way, don't call it a season. Call it a sequel. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, which I was like, oh, no. Well, these... if, the, if, the, if the next one is basically going to be Aliens to Alien, I'm so in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because because we don't know if they're going to pick up the same style. They might do something completely different. Oh, yeah, Either, yeah. You know, if they stay with the Stephen King style, I'm totally in. But if for some reason they're like, no, 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 no. We're going to move into this other milieu and do it Well, if they went into, like, Carpenter and Cronenberg, I'd so... Oh, like, my God, that'd like, be amazing. If they moved on to other 80s giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Oh, that'd be badass. You know, and you can it's still so do that because badass. Carpenter and Cronenberg both did Steve, both did uh, King. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, yeah. So if we're just gonna do like a show, uh, like a like a supernatural horror show that kind of just goes through the eighty famous eighties directors. Oh man, I'm so cool. Yeah, yeah. And there's a whole lot of so things I would like to see explored because, like, we still don't know everything there is to really know about the Veil of Shadows. Yeah, we still don't know everything else that that government facility might have been tampering with. Yeah, yeah. Even though even though they saved their friend at the end, he's still infected with something. Yeah, something's infected him, uh, obviously. And we don't know if a certain character who died to sacrifice themselves in the end is still alive, alive. Still or alive. not. Because it's very possible. You know, because we don't know if they died or they just transferred somewhere. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. You know, not entirely sure. Um, so Jesus Christ, like, why are you still listening to us? Stop and watch that damn show. Stranger Things on Netflix. Fucking 10 out of 10. Like, this is hands down one of my favorite shows ever. Oh, and yeah. I've only seen the first season so far, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, go check it out now.